The first term of a geometric sequence is 3, and the third term is 4 thirds. Find the fifth term. Now, we know the formula for the nth term is given by a sub n equals a times r to the n minus first. Now, we are told what the first term is. The first term is 3, so we can rewrite this as a sub n equals 3 times r to the n minus 1, but we're not told what the common ratio is. So what we need to do is use the information that we're given, specifically that the third term is 4 thirds, to figure out what the common ratio is. So if we look at the third term, a sub 3, this is going to be 3 times r to the 3 minus first power. We've plugged in 3 for n, which is equal to 3 times r squared. And in this case, we're told that the third term is 4 thirds. So we know that this is equal to 4 thirds. Once we've set this equal to 4 thirds, we have an equation that only has one variable in it, specifically r. So if we solve for r, that will tell us the value of the common ratio. To get r squared alone, we need to get rid of that 3 out front, so we divide both sides by 3. But in this case, I'm actually going to multiply both, side, both sides by 1 third. It's just going to be a little bit easier on the right because multiplying 4 thirds by 1 third is a little bit easier than dividing it by 3. When we do that, on the left hand side, the 3's cancel, of course, and we're left with r squared which was the intention. And then on the right, when we multiply those fractions straight across, we end up with 4 over 9. Now, to get r alone by itself, we use the square root property here. And so that gives us r equals plus or minus the square root of 4 ninths, taking the square root of both sides. And the square root of 4 ninths is 2 thirds. So we have r equals plus or minus 2 thirds, which is initially appearing to be quite a conundrum. There are two values of r that end up working out here. It could either be 2 thirds or negative 2 thirds. So either a sub n equals 3 times 2 thirds to the n minus 1, or a sub n equals 3 times negative 2 thirds to the n minus 1. So there are two possibilities here. However, this is not actually a problem because we know the first term is 3, we know the third term is 4 thirds, and we want to figure out the fifth term. So in essence, if the first formula is the right one, all of the terms are going to be positive. If the second formula is the right one, they're going to be alternating because each time we multiply by a negative. So the first term will be positive, the second will be negative, the third will be positive, the fourth will be negative, and the fifth will be positive. But remember, in this problem, we want to find the fifth term, and either way, it's going to be positive. And so what this actually means is it doesn't matter which of these formulas we use, the fifth term is going to be the same either way. If they had asked us for the fourth term or the sixth term, there would be two possibilities because those can be either positive or negative. But we're asked for the fifth term, which we know must be positive. So we can use either one of these formulas. I'm going to use the top one, because why deal with more negative signs than you need to? So we've got a sub n equals 3 times 2 thirds to the n minus 1. We want to find the fifth term. So when we substitute in 5 for n, we've got 5 minus 1 for the exponent, which becomes 4. And so this becomes 3 times... 2 thirds to the 4th power is going to be 16 over 81 because 2 to the 4th is 16 and 3 to the 4th is 81. 
and we can reduce the 3 and the 81 by 3. If we cancel out that 3 in the 81, that leaves us with 27. And so we're left with 16 over 27 for our fifth term, which is our final answer.